In the last module, we investigated the dynamics of protein levels in a system where the average rate of protein translation was independent of protein abundance. In more sophisticated models, the rates of production of various molecules depends on the abundances of enzymes, substrates, and other reactants in the cell. The law of mass action is an expression typically used to describe the rates of reactions involving multiple reactants. In this set of videos, we will derive the law of mass action by viewing chemical reactions in terms of molecular collisions. We will use the law of mass action to describe cooperative binding, which can be parametrized using Hill functions. We will then show how cooperative binding can lead to bistability in protein levels in a cell. The law of mass action relates the stoichiometry of reactants to the time rate at which a reaction occurs. Our derivation of the law of mass action uses a simplified picture. Suppose we have some reactants that look like magenta hot pants. Here are some more reactants sketched as blue triangles, and here are some yellow circles. The molecules can mix in a bath. Suppose that a chemical reaction of interest requires that a pair of hot pants be surrounded by yellow circles hanging out at the left, top, and right grooves, and at the same time by a blue triangle hanging out below, with the entire complex looking something like a peacock with yellow feathers. How often is the peacock present? Attach a camera, your mind's eye, to this particular pair of hot pants, and keep track of the fraction of time that the left groove is occupied by a yellow circle. With this lone circle bouncing around the vicinity, the highlighted groove is occupied for a small minority of the time. If we introduce a second circle to the mix, we double the fraction of time the groove is occupied. Adding a third circle triples the fraction of time the groove is occupied. If each individual circle occupies the groove for only a small fraction of time, the total fraction of time the groove is occupied is proportional to the concentration of yellow circles in the solution. The proportion of time that the left groove is occupied is p sub left, which is equal to a proportionality coefficient k sub y multiplied against the concentration of y, meaning the concentration of yellow circles. The probability that the left groove is occupied is equal to k sub y times the concentration y. Analyzing the top and right grooves in the same way, we obtain equivalent expressions for the corresponding probabilities of occupation. The triangular socket is similar. A lone triangle will occasionally occupy the triangular groove. A second triangle doubles the fraction of time that this groove is occupied. The fraction of time that the bottom triangular groove is occupied is equal to a proportionality coefficient, k sub b, multiplied against the concentration of b meaning the concentration of blue triangles. A yellow circle is hanging out at the left groove of the hot pants part of the time, as indicated by yellow on the timeline. The fraction of time the groove is occupied might be broken up into segments of apparently randomly varying length. Suppose that the collisions encountered by the various grooves of the hot pants are independent. Even though the top and left grooves are occupied for about the same fraction of time, 
the particular time intervals of occupation in these two timelines are not necessarily perfectly overlapping. The groove to the right is occupied during its own set of time intervals, and the triangular groove is occupied during time intervals indicated in blue, which add up to a total fraction of time roughly k sub b times the concentration of b. This is potentially different from the fraction of time that any particular circular groove is occupied. The time intervals during which the left, top, right, and triangular grooves are simultaneously occupied are the time intervals, shaded in red, during which the peacock complex is present. The left groove is occupied for a fraction of time k sub y times concentration y. Within this fraction of time, the top groove is itself occupied for a fraction, k sub y times concentration y, of the time. Thus, the fraction of the time that both left and top grooves are occupied is k sub y times concentration y times itself k sub y times concentration y. If the left groove is occupied half of the time, and the top groove is occupied half of the time, even being occupied half of those particular times when the left groove is occupied, then the top and left grooves are simultaneously occupied one quarter of the time. Likewise, the right groove contributes another multiplicative factor k sub y times concentration y, and the triangular groove contributes a factor k sub b concentration b. The proportion of time this particular pair of hot pants is part of a peacock-shaped complex is the product of the fractions of time that the individual grooves are occupied. There might be more than one lone pair of hot pans in the chemical mixture of interest. We can draw similar timelines to illustrate the transient presence of peacock complexes nucleated off of these other pairs of pants. Suppose that hot pants can jiggle and change between two alternative geometric conformations. One conformation doesn't do anything but a second conformation can lead to a chemical reaction if it occurs in the context of a peacock complex. Rolling dice at regular time intervals mimics stochastic fluctuations between these conformations. Because the first roll occurs while this pair of hot pants is not part of a fully formed peacock complex, the hot pants will fail to generate a reaction no matter which conformation they take. This second rule failed to generate a reaction even though a peacock complex was present, and that must mean that the hot pants were in the wrong conformation. A duration of time might elapse before the first example in which the peacock complex is formed and at the same time these hot pants are in a conformation capable of generating a reaction indicated by the explosion. With additional rolls of dice, the timeline can be populated with additional dry spells punctuated by occasional reactions. A similar pattern can be illustrated for this other pair of hot pants. The precise number and timing of reactions in these three timelines can differ because we are considering stochastic collisions. Because the reactions can modify or perhaps consume the hot pants, the portions of the dynamics of a pair of hot pants following its earliest reaction might not follow the model we have just used. The questionable sections of the timelines are visually subdued to sweep them under the carpet. What is the number of reactions that we can count as we look between an initial time t naught and a final time t naught plus delta t? This depends on how much red shading we see in each timeline on average, in other words the product of three factors of k sub y times concentration y and a factor of k sub b times concentration b. The number of reactions we count also depends on the efficiency with which dice rolls convert red shading into productive chemical reactions, symbolized by the coefficient k sub d, where d stands for dice. The number of reactions depends on the total number of timelines across which we search for reactions. The number of timelines is proportional to the concentration of magenta hot pants, or concentration capital M for short. 
and the number of reactions we count depends on the duration of time delta t during which we look. Longer time intervals embrace more reactions. Taken together, the number of reactions that proceed in a time delta t is a product of proportionality coefficients, various factors of reactant concentrations, and a factor of the time interval delta t. Capital R counts the number of reactions that have proceeded since some reference time. The rate of reactions over time is proportional to concentration M, concentration Y cubed, concentration B. All those factors multiply together. We asked how often a mixture of hot pants, triangles, and circles could form peacock-shaped complexes and subsequently produce a chemical reaction. We determined that the time rate of reactions was proportional to the concentrations of the reactants multiplied together as many times as they entered into the reaction stoichiometry. For example, since the stoichiometry of this reaction equation includes three yellow circles, the factor concentration Y is cubed in the reaction rate equation. Likewise, we could consider a bath of reactants X, Y, Z, and so forth with additional letters of the alphabet implied but not illustrated, and we could ask how often the reactants would generate reactions relying on the formation of complexes with, uh, for example, nu sub x copies of x, nu sub y copies of y, nu sub z copies of z, and so forth. Uh, again, the time rate of reactions is proportional to a product of the concentrations of the reactants with the concentrations raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, those Greek letter nus. This is the law of mass action. This is the law of mass action. Some notes of caution. If you would like to see why this section is labeled, quote, a little lie, Google for the phrase elementary reaction. And finally, if you would like to learn a more formal version of the notion we have touched on by saying that a groove is occupied part of the time, or by saying that sometimes a molecule is hanging out near a groove, Google for the phrase cross-section. We've just derived the law of mass action by considering collisions between multiple reactants. In the next video, we will use the law of mass action to calculate the bound fraction of enzymes for a system displaying cooperativity. This fraction can be parametrized using Hill functions.